G'day everyone. It's Alan Andres here, founder of Zoo Coins and Zoo Cares. This is our uh, broadcast today, which is about episode three. And episode three is about short-term values of Zangle. This is the show live brought to you for all our ZooCoin community. And it's all about uh, bringing some updates and some very topical points of interest. So uh, pleased to have you all on board. And I look forward to today's episode. There's going to be a fair bit to cover. Well, let's touch on the uh, the updates first, everybody, about the wallets, which comes back from episode one. Uh, so today is the 16th of September. So it was a couple of days ago. Now, uh, in terms of the, we have selected, and thank you, everybody, for coming in with your emails, uh, which has been phenomenal, uh, wanting the uh, the wallets to test and trial. So uh, the good news is uh, we have selected 30. Uh, our support staff uh, went through hundreds of hundreds of emails, and we do have a selection as what we wanted, which is uh, based around the uh, couple of people from uh, each of the 15 countries. And in addition, we've got a good range between uh, male and female and age brackets going from as young as 20 through to 86, uh, 86 years of age. So we thank uh, everybody for wanting to participate that. They will be going out today. And in fact, uh, whilst I'm talking, uh, they should be hitting the target. Now, if you if you don't receive a notification that you uh, are going to get the wallet, do not send hundreds of emails requesting are you in that list or not. You just accept the fact that uh, you won't have received the wallet, uh, but the other 30 certainly will. So that's very pleasing on that front. Looking forward to that. And uh, again, just to rem remember one thing, if you're as you're using the wallet, um, it's not going to blow up. It's uh, not going to damage anything. Uh, it's there to, to go through the, the, the motion. You'll have a phone number which you can send coins or fraction to. Uh, to test and see how that works um, just use it uh, we'll be monitoring it uh, it's all about the experience and of course um, uh, you know there's no need to send emails through about any issues we'll, we'll know where the issues are through uh, what we built at the back end so enjoy that and uh, let's see how we go do take some screenshots by the way uh, you know you can certainly do that um, if you if you do have a serious issue then by all means, uh, send that screenshot through. There, there could be something that uh, we're not not aware of. And bear in mind, um, you may encounter problems because we've got different countries. We've got everybody's got different models of phones between uh, iOS and between Android. There are different uh, age brackets of those phones, so don't panic. Uh, we need to know um, that it's across the board. So uh, if your phone doesn't work whatsoever, well then that's an excuse to send that email in. To uh, support, so let's get on with that. That's great. Now, on the other front, the tutorial. The tutorial's been a very interesting uh, exercise that my IT team. Um, now, initially, uh, we should have put out the the burst there that we weren't designing the tutorial as a wallet simulator. That was not is not the intention. Okay, it's not that you press buttons and you expect it to work on your phone. Uh, we had people concerned because it wasn't working on the iOS, uh, whilst it did work on the Android. Uh, the reality is that's a, a PC-driven uh, laptop uh, um, uh, I, uh, you know, operating systems that we wanted the tutorial. So it's not replicating the way the phone works. It's all about following the tutorial for your familiarization with the wallet. And we are monitoring every step that you use that, no matter what you think you've messed up or what buttons. It's about you being intuitive to see what you would have to have pressed to trans work your way through the wallet functionalities. So it's 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 a case of seeing how you look at the uh, the wallet. It's a case of following through those processes and making sure that uh, you get to the end of the tutorial. Now, unfortunately, uh, obviously we had a lot of iOS phone people concerned and jumping up and down, and uh, that's fine. We put out the bursts. Do not use the tutorial on your phones. Use them on the PC or laptops or iPads, okay? Um, now, despite those that had trouble with their phones, we have some interesting results of those that were able to follow through. So as you know, there's over 2,100 2, odd uh, ZooCoin members, that is those that are buyers of coins. And the latest updates of the tutorial is interesting. So overall, we had 1,146 people uh, use the tutorial. We had five, 657 
success from start to finish where we had 100% success on the monitoring those processes and we had 489 failures and that's not failures to do as I said earlier with uh, being on your iPhone okay so those that had iPhone problems revisit the tutorial on your PCs if you haven't got a, uh, a PC which a couple indicate they don't then then uh, you know find a friend or somebody that you can use it uh, on the PC uh, so there was a 57.3% uh, success rate overall and a 42.7% failure rate uh, and between the the type of PCs um, that is uh, Google and uh, effectively um, uh, Apple computers uh, it was interesting numbers so the Android side of things we had 388 testers of which 234 were successful and 154 either gave up or failed so um, we had a 60.3 percent success rate there and a 39.7 percent failure rate uh, in terms of the iOS uh, uh, laptops etc we had 758 testers 423 successful and 335 failed uh, or failed to get or just gave up uh, on the tutorials now those numbers are poor and uh, certainly are not good enough if people um, are going to end up with valuable coins sitting in a wallet of which they're going to find that they're going to have to use so we would encourage everybody uh, those that uh, got through from start to finish uh, well done congratulations um, you can use the uh, system again if you wish to uh, ensure that you know what you're doing those that failed we encourage you to have another go have another crack uh, let's get those numbers up because we're still overall we're only uh, you know at the 50 percent mark of those that bothered to uh, want to have a try now if you can't be bothered to try and you can't be bothered to use the tutorial then uh, you know when the time arrives and you've got problems with your coins as I said before a decentralized platform that's run by the peers there will be no support here to help you because it gets unleashed it's out in the market and it's your responsibility this is the responsibility uh, placed on peers who want to participate in this crypto space as I said yesterday you know in episode two talking about crypto values there's a certainly a massive upside and attraction to crypto but there's also possibility uh, of problems where people uh, are going to lose coins and they're going to come in here and they're going to make accusations and all the rest of it and we're not going to be listening because we're putting a lot of time and money and effort into getting it right as we said before with this soft launch and the release so that's the updates guys get out there get on the tutorials uh, work your way through it uh, we'll be getting some feedback from the uh, the lucky 30 people from around the world and that's very intriguing and exciting for us to see uh, where that goes now uh, there was a question posed about the tutorials well why don't we just use the simulator as or the real wallet well there's that's the reason why because of the failure rate and we'd have a disaster with data in terms of those wallets we're hoping that we have more success with the 30 people uh, we want to see 100 percent success there we don't want to see uh, any failure rates at all and that's a significant move forward and um, uh, we also had a lot of comments about the the look and feel of the wallet uh, and some people saying that they you know what hasn't changed much since the original version well that's correct uh, but we we have in the uh, in the wings um, you've got to understand that we're following processes and flows of the network which is important because once you uh, unleash the network you can't change the network you can change look and feel of wallets whenever you like you know that's what they call the skin the color and the feel and the and, and how it looks but it's it's the interesting part is the triggers that is where people are sending and pressing buttons and affecting the outcomes um, you know in the network itself now in, in real terms it's not very difficult because we're looking at send function we're looking at download we're looking at getting the wallet and we're looking at the balances now in theory there's only about five or six uh, points of friction and those are the points that relate to the network uh, in the future, which may not be that far away, actually, we do have uh, some alternative look and feel color designs that we're playing with, and we have been playing with them for many, many months. Uh, there's no point unleashing that on you guys yet because we just want to get you past the post on, on the simplistic version that we have. But uh, don't be surprised if not too far away, uh, we end up showing you some of the, uh, the, the, the gurus out there that have uh, come up with 
designs and colors and, and make it a bit more focal point of the wallet itself. So I just make that perfectly clear. The network is different and distinct from the look and feel that the wallet can change any time, but you can't change the network. All righty, enough on that. So uh, today, uh, interesting topic today I've selected is that following on from my globalization view of episode two about crypto values and why we're in this space and why we love it, um, we've sort of narrowed down where Zucoin sits in the big picture. Uh, now, again, this is not about giving advice. Uh, you make your own decisions. I often say to people, uh, you know, you're in the highest risk category at this stage in the crypto space but I did quantify that with the way you have a relationship with other shares and investments and the risks that, we, that are posed there. So for our own internal purposes, and this is sharing it with everybody, um, some five months ago, we wanted to sort of get a handle on uh, where Zucoin's presently sat and where, it's, where it was heading in the future uh, in terms of the utility of that uh, Zucoin, uh, as I've described many a times and what we do with it. Um, and how they, they rate and compare crypto against many other cryptos. Now, there's, there's something like 6,000 cryptos out there, uh, which is quite a cluster to work your way through. So the team were able to identify a group out of South Korea, which is called Zangle. Now, it's spelled X-A-N-G-L-E, and the website is zangle.io. Um, now, some, you know, clever little bright people out there, who, the, the trolls in the, in the world, uh, got hold of some of that in the earlier days. And, um, you know, you, you've got to be able to post everything in relation to the overall big picture of the coin or the operations, um, which we were working through. Now, what Zangle does is it creates what's called a credibility rating. It looks at the, no different to a standard and pores and sort of analysts that look at shares and things. Um, they're not uh, They're not there to give any personal view. What they do is they take a whole batch of information uh, across a number of sectors of your product, and they analyze that and they come up with a, a rating system. Now, there are a number, there are basically a number of categories in Zangle, which is very much highlighted. So what I've done is we've we finally got the, the latest report, and I'll share you uh, some of the, the tips about that, and we're going to release the report to everybody. So you're across exactly the, the knowledge base that we have and where we see ourselves, and that'll lead into where we want to be. And, and that all relates to, obviously, the value long-term of competing. In our world, uh, we only say that Zucoins has one competitor, and that is Bitcoin. I'm not interested in all the other 6,000. They don't have the capacity on the network to do what we do. Um, they're, they're fringe players as far as that goes, as far as we're concerned. So our main target is, you know, will we run down uh, Bitcoin in the long term in terms of a value proposition? So... From the report, and I've just got in front of me now, so if I'm ducking and weaving, looking down, uh, is good reason for it. My memory only goes so far. Uh, some in the organisation would say uh, I'm bordering on dementia but um, or delusional. But either way, it's all good results in the long term. So what they do is they have uh, two categories uh, in the report. And the first is what they call non-investment grade. And when you see the report, that's a big red bar, uh, bar that's there in the uh, in the um, release of the report and underneath non-investment grade they have junk which is rated as credibility ratings of d and c then they have speculative which is double c triple c b minus and b and then they have neutral now from neutral onwards they call that investment grade that's when you start to get a bit of interest um, in relation to the coin uh, you still can be categorised as speculative. I mean, I would say, let's say all coins are uh, speculative anyway at this stage. But from a Zangle point of view, on the analysis they've done, um, they start that the next bracket is, is neutral, which leads into investment grade. And that gives you some attraction to the bigger players in the market, which is where we wanted to make sure we're, we've got interest uh, from, you know, once you want to list on the exchanges. Now, under investment grade, you will see the headings neutral. Now, neutral is uh, inclusive of B plus, double B minus, double B, and double B plus. So that's the neutral. They're not they're not speculative. They're still in the investment grade category, but there's a bit of work to be done because you want to you know up the ante and uh, and and certainly get um, you know into the next 
categories of more interest of the bigger players. And when I talk bigger players, you're talking about the super funds and you're talking about some of the hedge funds and you're talking about the businesses that are now starting to take crypto seriously as an investment portfolio or part of their investment portfolio. Uh, in Australia, we've had some very generous uh, legislation and laws in that the, the ATO uh, accepts quite clearly that our super funds can have uh, investments in crypto. Obviously, it's got to be governed by the, the, the trust deeds, uh, allowing that to happen. Um, but nevertheless, th that's a big plus in the market where you get a lot of buyer strength coming through if you get it right uh, for long-term investment. The next uh, category is solid, and solid is where we look at uh, triple B, A minus, a, A plus, and of course, the ultimate in terms of this overall investment grade category is where you sit with what's called prime. And in prime, you've got double A minus, double A, double A plus, and triple A. Now, I will say at this stage that if you take the scale of that, uh, it's interesting to note that Bitcoin is a double A plus, so it's rated as prime, uh, and Ethereum is a double A. So they are in the prime category. Now, um, what am I talking about when they look at the credibility? Well, credibility, they look at things like, firstly, the company and the team. They, they uh, create a, a value uh, rating in relation to the team. They have the uh, IR and disclosure practices. They then look at financial sustainability. They look at token economics. They then look at the business performance. And then, of course, lastly, they look at the technical auditing and legal um, support of the product of the coin. Now, when we started this journey, and you'll see it in the report, uh, and it's all very transparent, uh, you will see that um, when we first started five months ago, given that we didn't have the wallet out, given that it was an MVP, um, we've internally funded this uh, project from start to finish. And I should say, um, whilst we are, have been solid and been solid for many years from our great supporters, um, putting the coins to one side, uh, my business partner, uh, who resides here in Albury, Wodonga, uh, is a wonderful gentleman, uh, has been with us for with me for 20 odd years. And it's no nothing to suggest out of school that John's backed the projects, which includes all of the things coming together from the old Easy Bonds through to Split Lock through to where we are with Zucas and Zoo Coins, because it's a bit like a jigsaw. People don't understand how all of those entities and projects fit together, but they do, and more will, will be revealed. So John has uh, supported to the tune of uh, 14 million Australian dollars, and we have other huge backers as well. Now, we don't have uh, VC backers, and we don't have having gone circulating looking for ICOs and that sort of money for good reason, because this uh, enterprise that we have will never be public. Um, the only entry point that anybody gets the advantage of what we're doing uh, is that the, the opportunities on the products that we release basically go through uh, to the coins uh, based on what I've talked about, mass adoption, product lines, virtual real estate, and so on. So there will never, ever be a, a public listing of this enterprise. It will remain private. And for that reason, we haven't gone looking for capital and we have a, you know, on that capital base, we, we know how much we need and what our burn rate is each month, which is, uh, you know, quite significant, and we're happy to work our way through that. So that's in one sense then if you're looking at the um, some of these issues that are raised in the credibility rating, um, we don't we will never sort of get a high rating. We'll, we'll sort of be on the lows. Uh, we might even sort of up the ante to mediums or highs when you read the report, but we won't be able to push that up high because, as a, as a business, uh, we're not looking for a $50 million cash infusion or $100 million. We, are, we do run a lean, mean machine. Our overheads, uh, whilst we say they're significant for, from a personal perspective, certainly aren't nowhere near some of the burn rates that you'll see uh, in the marketplace. So, um, you know, in, in terms of that, uh, uh, that leads us to some of the interesting components in the report that you'll read. Now, uh, circling back, when we started, as I said, we started with a triple C rating. So that triple C rating was very poor um, and it embraced some of the things that we couldn't tick boxes with going through, which put us into that highly speculative category. Now, as the journey goes on, when you get onto Zangle, what happens is 
as more information comes to hand and you start to tick more of the boxes that are relevant to your business and organisation, uh, you start to get Zangle reviewing and upgrading the credibility ratings. Now, unbeknown to many, uh, we then subsequently some two months ago provided further information about the technology, uh, even though we're not fully launched. Uh, we provided more in terms of the legals, and I'd invite you to look at the legals because, uh, you, you know, that's the foundation stone upon which you can get comfort of what your product is about without the nonsense that goes on about being scams and things. You know, you've got to read the information. Uh, everything we do, and given my background and history, is placed through high-level uh, due diligence and legals. And in that regard, you'll see that we have significant um, uh, reports from our Singapore lawyers that from an Asian perspective, uh, we've ticked the boxes that, um, you know, we don't we don't uh, breach any of the securities laws. We're not a security. Uh, we're a payment token. Uh, we are work, you know, working through that that puts us on par with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the benchmark in terms of being, as I said the other day, the, the commodity rather than being trapped with the global security laws in different jurisdictions. And of course, the benchmark, the high watermark there is the US laws. If you have a coin that is not governed by the US security laws or the Howey test, which is what they call it, uh, you are on, in my words, Blue Star. You are Bitcoin, you are Ethereum, and you won't have the issues that you see with a litigation like Ripple being defined as securities. Now, the same goes with our Australian laws here. Uh, you have the, the tick off that you don't want to be caught up as a financial product. You don't want to be concerned with selling some coins as a result of the, the requirement for financial services licenses. Uh, you, you want to make sure that that's a, a huge tick which puts us in box seat that we are looking at the truly decentralised peer-to-peer processes so that everybody is really trading commodity uh, or using it as a mechanism for the goods and services that we talk about with merchants. And finally, uh, in Europe, Europe was a big tick. Without the European sign-off under European laws, uh, which means you're not getting caught up in money remittance licensing, you don't have the issues with AML, KYC issues, uh, none of that, uh, um, you know, is of any significance. Now, look, I've got a little comment here from a James NJ. Now, James, um, James seems to be really excited. He seems to be one of our trolls that's uh, entered into, and we welcome him aboard. Thank you, James. It's probably not your real name, but, uh, you know, keep working away that you think it's a scam and all the rest of it. But, um, you know, um, uh, you'll be certainly turned off at some stage, James, because the language is a bit violent there. But uh, I appreciate you being taking the time to listen to me. So um, that's one of the great things with uh, social media, you know. Uh, well, look, he's, he's not here. He is, um, you know, wanting to talk about getting away with things, but um, he's just gone, so everybody. So uh, we we'll look forward to seeing what name he actually has in real life, which is interesting uh, that none of these uh, young characters like to uh, disclose their true names. Uh, sorry for diverging there, but um, that's the sort of stuff that we get every time from these people. Uh, now, circling back. If you look at the uh, the ratings, then uh, subsequent to that, uh, that uh, we were upgraded to a um, uh, from a, from a triple C to a uh, a B, and the report that you'll see that's being sent out today, uh, I'm pleased to say that with more information that's going into Zangle, uh, which follows through from the legals and follows through from the product, uh, we've just been recently upgraded to a B plus, uh, which puts us into the investment grade neutral. And uh, we have high expectations that as we keep providing the market with uh, targeted areas of interest to us, that that ratings uh, you can monitor and follow uh, as what we're doing basically, you know, on a week by week basis. So the short term valuation prospects are, are, are fully transparent for all those to see. Um, these are serious players in terms of Zangle.io. Uh, you know, you can't fudge your way through this. You've got to make sure that uh, it's there and that their analysts and their teams and their legal people and their technical um, uh, looking at and reviewing what your coin is doing. Now, most coins are all there. As I said, Bitcoin and Ethereum are there for sure. So I just wanted to highlight a couple of areas that shows the enormity of where we can grow ourselves and improve the credibility ratings. Now, one is 
as soon as the the uh, we've now got thirty wallets out there, and that'll that'll create a bit of an upgrade. But as soon as all two odd thousand people have got the wallet in the network, that will be a massive upgrade in the the technical area uh, of of the network in relation to the credibility uh, rating, and that will propel us uh, to some quite significant rating levels because the network's actually live and going. So I guess you can understand uh, the journey coming from triple C to B to B plus and where we're going to end up in that review. Now, as I said, we won't get good ratings in terms of the, the company or personnel behind what's happening um, in terms of the, the crypto. And it's for good reason for that because the whole concept of decentralization is that nobody should be behind the product. You know, when, when you receive your coins, uh, you'll probably never give one iota about Al Andres or any of the team. Uh, we will be treating the zoo coin as a means to an end for our purposes in relation to, uh, you know, as a value proposition, which comes back to how we look at from our main uh, perspective on increasing mass adoption of the coin. Now, that doesn't stop anyone else on the planet from replicating or doing things with the coin, which increases the interest in the coin. You know, every single one of you out there may find an opportunity to use the zoo coin in a new and innovative way. The bottom line is you've got to have a coin to start with, which is the demand side of the equation, which leads us to tomorrow's talk about long-term value uh, prospects. Now, uh, same with developers. Developers will have the access to the open source. They will be able to do what they like, to create really true peer NFTs, you know, really true virtual real estate. Uh, I'm focused on the lottery and the database and Zucats. We'll talk about that with the merchants. But that doesn't stop others doing that, which is leading into the, the value proposition. Um, now, interestingly, you know, I mentioned earlier that Bitcoin has uh, an A, uh, double A plus rating. But when you read the report, the team behind Bitcoin is simply referred to as Satoshi, which is ironic, really. I mean, people go on about scams and things, but no one knows even who the hell Satoshi is or whether it's a group of people or a single person. And yet it still gets a high rating because... The perception is somebody built that out uh, in relation to the team behind Bitcoin. Well, there is no team behind Bitcoin. You know, there is a group of uh, Cluey software developers. They came up with the concept in January 2009, and it's been taken over by others that have, you know, developed and matured the network to what we see today. And that's the same processes that we see with ZooCoins. You know, you won't be interested in what the team is doing in ZooCoins because there is no team once it's released. It's all about the, the network and what people adopt and take that on. So that's one issue. I mean, again, I mentioned we, our ratings will be low because we're not interested in worrying about uh, the big guns coming in and being part of our business operations. We're very happy and content. Uh, we know where we're heading uh, and you'll see more of that tomorrow's broadcast of the long-term project value propositions. Uh, the other areas, of course, um, that we, we focus in on is business performance. Well, it's not really, there's not a business performance there because we've taken ourselves to the level that this is not a security. You know, nobody in a zoo coin has rights to anything other than the coin itself. There are no shareholder meetings. Uh, there are no rights to shareholders. There are no dividends. There's nothing of that ilk that puts it into a security category for good reason, because it's a decentralized digital asset. It's an asset that you, you obtain and you use it and you hope that there's big value that comes through through mass adoption because others want it. That's the key. And that's what makes Bitcoin so special. Now, if you take the Bitcoin being special, which I went over uh, in my earlier uh, episode, number two, then, of course, you iron out the, the, the chinks uh, in Bitcoin, which is the you don't want miners. Uh, you certainly don't want costs and fees, you don't want any third-party input, uh, then that's the game changer. So we are singly focused on that. Uh, we block out all of the negative uh, dribble that goes on because uh, that sort of dribble just lends itself to uh, disillusioned people that uh, A, are not risk-takers and B, uh, are delusional in themselves uh, of what the future holds with crypto as, a, as an industry sector. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, pleased to say that you'll be fully transparent. Keep an eye on zangle.io 
Um, the team will be sending out the full report. Um, it's there, you know, there's elements there that that we we accept because of uh, the low ratings. But given that the success really is where we've achieved where we are even today, just on the basis of getting that B plus rating, which puts us to an investment grade under their credibility rating, which is exciting. And uh, and we'll share how tomorrow. Look forward to seeing you then. But um, stay with it and get out there on those tutorials, for goodness sake, because uh, if you if we can't get those numbers up, you're just holding everybody else up. We need that you are all, as a team, as a tribe, making it happen. And uh, good luck to those 30 out there. Let's hope that you guys, uh, from the ages of 20 to 86, can actually nail it and uh, make us feel a lot more comfortable. Cheers, everybody. Have a good time. Bye.